For years, gardeners have struggled with balancing green and brown waste in compost piles. Too much green, and the pile turns slimy and smelly. Too much brown, and it dries out, refusing to break down. But in this experiment, the simple addition of molasses to fresh grass clippings completely changed the process. Over the course of 30 days, what started as sticky, sugary chaos turned into deep, dark humus crawling with worms. It wasn't just compost, it was a living transformation powered by biology and balance. Why molasses supercharges grass clippings in the decomposition process? Grass clippings are rich in nitrogen but notorious for clumping and turning anaerobic when piled. The trick is to control the microbial balance, that's where molasses comes in. Molasses is pure carbohydrate, energy food for beneficial bacteria. When you coat fresh grass clippings in a light molasses solution, you give microbes an instant sugar rush that wakes up dormant soil life. Those bacteria multiply quickly, breaking down the nitrogen in the grass into simpler, usable compounds without causing the foul, rotting smell most piles develop. In this experiment, the ratio used was one tablespoon of unsulfured blackstrap molasses per liter of water. This diluted mix was sprayed over a wheelbarrow of freshly cut grass until it was just damp, not dripping. The coated clippings were then mixed directly with dry leaves in alternating layers. Within three days, the pile began warming up, and the sour smell that usually follows green waste was replaced by a faintly sweet, earthy aroma, a sign of active aerobic decomposition. How dry leaves and molasses together create perfect compost balance. Dry leaves provide the essential carbon that grass clippings lack. On their own, leaves decompose slowly because they're high in lignin, a tough fiber that resists decay. But when they're combined with nitrogen-rich grass and a sugar source like molasses, something remarkable happens. The sugars activate bacteria that feed on the soft parts of the leaves first while fungi begin to colonize the tougher fibers. In the first week, the leaves absorb excess moisture from the grass and molasses, creating air pockets that prevent the pile from going anaerobic. This keeps oxygen flowing, which is, you know, absolutely critical for beneficial microbes. By day seven, small fungal threads could be seen weaving through the leaf layers, a sure sign of decomposition that's running clean and efficient. The mix no longer resembled yard waste. It looked like it was halfway to becoming real soil. The best layering ratio was roughly two parts dry leaves to one part molasses-coated grass clippings. Too much grass and the pile would overheat. Too many leaves and it would stall. The combination created a steady, moderate warmth around 120 degrees Fahrenheit inside the core, which is perfect for composting without driving away worms. By the second week, the pile's texture had changed dramatically. The once bright green clippings had turned dark brown, and the leaves were soft enough to crumble between fingers. The pile emitted a deep forest floor scent, showing it was well aerated. But the real surprise came around day 20. When the top layer was lifted, hundreds of red wigglers had moved in from the surrounding soil, clustering around the sugary zones. Worms are natural indicators of compost quality. They only enter when a system is balanced, aerobic, and free of harmful gases. Their presence meant that the microbes had already stabilized the materials into a food source that was rich in nutrients, but gentle enough for worm digestion. By day 30, the mix had turned almost black. Moisture levels were ideal, the temperature had cooled, and the material was teeming with life. What started as sugary clippings and crunchy leaves had become fine, crumbly humus, microbe-charged and full of worm castings, Gardeners who applied this finished compost to their garden beds notice stronger root growth and better soil structure within two weeks. Clay-heavy soils loosened faster, 
while sandy beds held moisture longer. The mix of bacterial and fungal activity from the molasses-fed process seemed to create humus that acted like a sponge, holding nutrients and water more efficiently than typical compost. To recreate this transformation, start with a small batch. Fill a bin or compost corner with a 6-inch layer of dry leaves, followed by a 3-inch layer of grass clippings dipped in diluted molasses water. Continue layering until the pile is at least 2 feet tall. Always end with a dry leaf layer on top to trap moisture and keep odours away. Turn the pile once a week to keep oxygen levels high, and if it feels too dry, sprinkle more of the molasses solution sparingly, just enough to keep it damp like a wrung-out sponge. Avoid using too much molasses or you'll encourage fermentation instead of composting. A light feeding once every seven days is ideal. If you notice vinegar or alcohol odours, it means the microbes are suffocating. Simply turn the pile and add more dry leaves. Within hours, the smell will fade and the composting rhythm will return. In about 30 days, you'll have dark, rich humus that smells like forest soil and feels soft to the touch. This method is especially effective during fall cleanup. Molasses acts like a biological heater by stimulating microbial activity, helping the piles stay warm even in cooler weather. The combination of sugars and carbon feeds fungi that thrive in mild temperatures, ensuring decomposition continues steadily through autumn and into early winter. By spring, your garden will have ready-to-use compost that's balanced, nutrient-rich and biologically active. The process doesn't just recycle waste, it transforms it into a living amendment that keeps soil healthy for months. The resulting humus doesn't leach away nutrients easily and helps maintain consistent moisture levels even in dry spells. The Lazy Gardener's shortcut to humus that worms can't resist. Worms don't eat grass or leaves directly, they eat the microbes that grow on them. Molasses provides those microbes the food they need to multiply, creating a living buffet for worms. The dry leaves offer bedding and structure, while the molasses-coated grass delivers nitrogen and energy. Together, they form the perfect micro-ecosystem for decomposition and soil renewal. So, before you bag up your yard waste this season, try this method. One tablespoon of molasses, a few buckets of grass clippings, and a pile of dry leaves can turn your garden into a living soil factory. Within a month, you'll have dark, fragrant humus that worms love, plants thrive on, and your soil will never forget. If this guide gave you new ideas for your composting routine, share it with other gardeners and subscribe to Soil Doctor for more proven science-backed soil revival methods. The simplest tweaks often bring the biggest transformations, and your soil deserves nothing less.